wanted to <coughs> discuss. So, in the last class we discussed uh, LC, okay, it is also called as LC tuned oscillators. This LC tuned oscillators because uh, we are going to use the inductors and capacitors. Uh, one of them is Colpitt's oscillator. The second one is Hartley oscillator. If you Uh, let me write the uh, AC equivalent to model. This is R. Because it is the same circuit as I wrote yesterday. So I can write this as C. Or this is connected to brain. I can write as CD. This is CG. This is inductance. Also. And then we have the Hartley oscillator. <coughs> Again, the same amplifier. Okay, we can count it. They say this has uh, LP, this is LG. Uh, can somebody tell me what is the frequency of oscillation? So, who is uh, somebody from G5? Group 5? Group 5. <coughs> G7? One of GL from J7. So what the frequency of oscillation? What the frequency of oscillation? Uh, is it 1 over 2 pi root of L equivalent into C? This is 1 over 2 pi on the root of L into C equivalent. Where C equivalent is C D C G by C D by C D whereas L equivalent is L D plus A D. And uh, what was the requirement here? The gain of the amplifier should be equal to C such as program and C for the requirement. So it should be C G by uh, it's actually the connect capacitor that is connected to gate by the capacitor that is connected to drain. Here it is just the reverse. A is equal to L D by A G. <coughs> okay, uh, who is uh, okay? Who am I going to take so far? Uh, Sonia, are you there? <coughs> okay, I need to take students by name, otherwise they're not. Sonia, are you there? Uh, who is uh, 29? Hello. Is 29 there? All of you are there in Reksha, can you unmute? I'll just take one student. You'll be there with me for 
20 minutes uh, then it will be rakshit raksha are you there yes sir okay <clears throat> uh this is what uh, we have discussed in the last class <coughs> uh what we'll do now is uh 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 preksha I, i know okay uh uh you wear a watch will you wear a watch hello may not be now you may not be wearing watch now so uh you usually wear a watch now when you just go outside yes sir is it a quartz watch yes sir Uh, what is what is actually this quartz coming? Uh, maybe uh, uh, if someone is there at your uh, house, so old people, so they have some watches, or maybe the old watches will have some key, so that you can, you may have to give the key so that it runs for at least one day or two day, and uh, if you don't give the key, it will just stop. So I'm just talking about olden days watches, and nowadays watches uh, uh, they are built with this quartz. Uh, Where, where, where else you have seen these quartz? Of course, in all the wall clocks also, maybe it is quartz watch. Am I correct? Yes, sir. Uh, what is what is this quartz watch? Okay, why why they are? Uh, have you ever come across this quartz name anywhere else other than these watches? Okay, let me just take okay uh, a crystal. Have you heard of crystal? Quartz crystal. Yes. Where? Well, just, 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 just give. Don't, don't worry. So this is there is no marks in all in this. Sir, <clears throat> some units in PU I have heard. Some. Sir, in some chapter in PU I have heard about. Okay, some chapters in PU uh, you have heard about. Uh, maybe uh, while discussing microcontrollers. Uh, have been okay. okay you already, already started, started microcontroller. Maybe in the previous semester, no. This semester you are studying microcontrollers. This semester. So, uh, do you know that like, okay, all the microcontrollers need a clock for its operation? They require a clock. Yes. Yes. Because you need to have a lot of timers, uh, all those stuff. For timers, you need to have some reference. No? That reference uh, uh, for getting that reference, you need to have a quartz, correct? Yes, sir. And uh, uh, okay, let me just uh, uh, why? Okay, does uh, the quartz watch what you are wearing or what is there on your uh, uh, wall? If it is of good quality, will it run fast or will it run slow any time? Unless that battery uh, is dried out, will it, will it show that twenty uh, four hours exactly without any deviation, even by one second for long, long, long period? Correct. It will too much negligible, sir. It is too much negligible. We can say it is almost perfect. Correct. Yes. Yes. Meaning, sir. of course, we are talking about some time there. So can you see that time is not at all changing, not at all changing. So assume that we we have a sine wave. Okay, this is stuck. Okay, let me just make sure that this comes back. One second. So there is a reason behind okay, all this uh, uh, thing what I'm talking about. Uh, let me share it. Okay, I'm sharing this. <coughs> Assume that you have a clock. Assume that you have a clock which is used for, uh, which is used for uh, a wall clock, like or maybe your wristwatch. Suppose if the frequency of this is uh, some okay. Assume that this is of uh, oh, some what is that? Maybe one megahertz. One megahertz. I will divide it such a way that it becomes exactly one hertz. So it is divided by sufficient number of times so that it is having one hertz frequency. One hertz frequency. So does this one hertz frequency corresponds to one second? Hello. Yes, sir. So now you can see this is one second. This one second will become sixty second. Then sixty second will become okay sixty minute. Then it is one hour. Then it is twenty four hours. Then it is one day. Like it is one week. So on so correct. See now. Yes, sir. <coughs> 
the timing starts from 1 hertz it goes to weeks months years together correct we know that yes. uh, the crystal that is there in your uh, watches has to have this frequency of 1 megahertz stable for days together weeks together and years together getting a point now yes if it has if your wall clock or the watch has to give exact timing for years together do they have to have a exactly one megahertz signal being generated a one meg one megahertz sine wave being generated continuously without any deviation yes sir Suppose assume that this 1 megahertz becomes 1.1 megahertz or 1.01 megahertz does this okay because you not be changing this amount of division amount of division is a circuitry which is fixed so that you get 1 hertz suppose instead of 1 hertz if you get it as 0.99 hertz or 1.001 hertz does this timing will change yes sir so do you want to have this to be 1 megahertz all the time or this much variation is fine with you but it should be always 1 megahertz it should be always 1 megahertz so that you get precise timing so that you can able to use it for use it for years together without any change in without need to change your clocks correct yes, <coughs> sorry <coughs> the basic for all these things that you need to have oscillations which are highly stable which are highly stable now come to the oscillators what we have discussed so far these are all oscillators which are used to generate sine wave at desired frequency because they are all made out of electrical components and electronic components and there is some supply involved with this there is a possibility of changing of values of the cd cg and whatever the value of inductance or some resistance value there are possibilities of maybe due to aging also this may just change so whenever these electrical components changes their value does the frequency of that will change yes sir the frequency of this will change of course this is fine to use it as sources where you need not have to have such an accuracy such type of accuracy is not too much required in case of your communication circuit assume that you are, you are listening to uh, what a, a particular radio station so have you ever come across sometimes whenever you are listening to a particular station the tuning will slightly go off yes sir. so in such case what do you do will you again turn that knob to again get back that station now assume that you are tuned to station 1 assume that you are tuned to station 1 so you are listening to the music or whatever assume that because of some reason you are not getting the proper uh, response from that you are not uh, properly hearing that particular station what do you do will you do a fine tuning yes sir so we'll do a fine tuning so that i can adjust the frequency back to my previous frequency so why this fine tuning is required is because there is some change that has happened in my circuitry so that my frequency has slightly deviated that is fine here that is fine in this application will you okay uh, will you be okay that okay one day it just gives okay plus two second other day it just gives minus three second other day it you want to give plus ten second will you accept such type of clocks no sir you will not but uh, are you okay with this type of tuning to listening to a radio or listening to a particular station yes sir. this is fine this is fine but this is not acceptable so there are some circuits or assume that you have your microcontroller you have designed it in such a way that it should give alarm at every 1.1 uh, hour 1.1 hour okay now it is giving at 1.1 hour Suppose uh, next time it just gives at 1.2 hour. So will you be okay with that? Because you are, you are designed in such a way that it should give it for 1.1 hour all the time. Since the oscillator that is actually running this, if it is not stable, something like this will happen. Something like this will happen. So we are not okay for some application where you, there, is, there is no <coughs> liberty or there is no deviation accepted. 
the stability of the oscillations have to be 100% pakka for a long time for a long time in such case i cannot go for even this hartley corpitz oscillator and even your uh, what is that rc oscillators then we have to go for different type of oscillators that is called as crystal oscillator so next type of oscillator is crystal oscillators the main advantage or main requirement of this crystal oscillator is or main purpose of using crystal oscillator is to get stable oscillations stable oscillations when i say stable oscillations it's not a stable system it is stable oscillations the oscillations should not change if the frequency is 1 megahertz it should be 1 megahertz even after years together even after years together so yes, we will be uh, trying to see ke, how do we develop a crystal oscillator and uh, what is the circuitry involved in that and uh, how do we get such a precise frequency uh, again uh, it is it, it is a part of your uh, culprit oscillator so i will write uh, the crystal symbol so it's it's a piezoelectric uh, uh, material so it is a piezo electric material that we used this is also called as quartz <coughs> the symbol of uh, uh, crystal of course uh, symbol of quartz is something like this this is how do we represent sorry uh, let me just rewrite it this is the symbol of quartz the equivalent electrical circuit of this <coughs> is given by a resistor a inductor a capacitor and one more capacitor in parallel so let me say this as c2 c1 this is inductance this is resistance this is so this quartz is a <coughs> two terminal device uh, having a equivalent having a symbol like this this is a equivalent circuit this will be used as a part of your culprit oscillator as a part of your culprit oscillator meaning i will write the culprit oscillator as it is so this is my culprit oscillator amplifier i'll ground it i will have the same cd cg and instead of having the inductor I'll have a crystal. This is a crystal. This is again C. <coughs> what is this? C D. C G. This is my crystal. So this is uh, as usual. It's grounded here. <coughs> if you just compare these two circuits, are they hundred percent same? These two. Except that inductor is replaced by the crystal. Inductor is replaced by the crystal. <coughs> so, do we have some uh, impedance for this particular crystal? Looking at this, it has it has got some impedance, no? So let us try to understand what is the impedance offered by this crystal because you are using this as an electrical component. So. If at all if it has to oscillate, if at all if it has to oscillate, this crystal should behave as what? This crystal should behave as suppose if it has to uh, oscillate. So is it the hundred percent same circuit? Yes. Sir. Suppose if you are satisfying this condition, then it will oscillate with this frequency. Then what should be this crystal so that it can oscillate with whatever the frequency that is given? Inductor. This should behave like an inductor. Whenever this behaves like an inductor, then only I can, of course, this can able to oscillate at a frequency decided by this crystal, decided by that crystal. Correct? So, yes. in this crystal oscillator, let us try to find out at what frequency this can behave like an inductor. This can behave like an inductor. So, let us try to understand. <coughs> 
So let me just rewrite that uh, equivalent circuit. This is impedance what you are looking at. <clears throat> this is C1, L, R and this is uh, C2. <clears throat> Typically, uh, the resistance is very small in terms of few ohms. So that's why we will neglect the resistance while finding the impedance over here. So we are neglecting this because the resistance offered by the crystal will be very small in terms of few ohms. We are neglecting that because this few ohms will be very less compared to uh, the reactance offered by this inductor. So that's why we are not considering this R while finding the Z. So, can I write Z is equal to 1 over admittance? Yes, sir. I will write the Laplace of it. I will write the Laplace of it. So, what is, <coughs> why we are writing uh, admittance is because we have two things in parallel so that it can easily add up. So, can I write this as, can I write this as S into C2 plus plus the admittance of this. So, what is the admittance of this C2? Is it SC2? Yes, sir. What is the admittance of this now? Is it not 1 over, because let me just write, okay, what is uh, the resistance offered by this? So, can I write, uh, what, what you are writing? You are writing the admittance, because I can add the admittance of this and this. Correct. Okay. Let me write it as, let me write it as Y of, uh, Y of, uh, okay, LC1. Correct. So, I am I'm writing what is the admittance offered by this entire series network. So, can I write Y of uh, LC1 as equal to, can I write it as 1 over R plus S into C1? Yes, sir. This is because what is what is the admittance uh, offered by this or can I write <coughs> y c1 is equal to 1 over 1 over z c1 which is equal to 1 over r plus 1 over s c1 okay instead of this can I write this because you have something in series, it is always better to consider the impedance when you are having something in series. So, can I write Y of this arm as equal to 1 over the impedance? Impedance is just the summation of this resistance. Sorry, uh, okay, let me just take out. Okay, we are neglecting this resistance now. Let me not write this resistance. Let me write L into S because we are neglecting the resistance. So, can I write ZS as equal to 1 over YS is equal to 1 over SC2 plus 1 over LS plus 1 over SC1. Will it make sense or is it confusing? <coughs> This is the impedance, we are trying to find the impedance, which is nothing but 1 over the admittance. Admittance is nothing but you write the admittance of this plus the admittance of this. So, when you are writing the admittance of this, so I am writing this is the admittance. So, is it 1 over the impedance here? Yes, sir. So, shall we simplify this? It is 1 over SC2 plus S C1 by A square L C1 plus 1. Yes, sir. Can I write it so? Or uh, yes. Is that fine? Yes, sir. Okay. What is next step? Can I write it as? I'll take the LCM there by S cube L C1 C2 plus S C2 plus S C1. 
Yes, sir. Can you add that? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, Then, then I'll just retain S square, S square here. If I just retain S square in the denominator, what are things I should take it out here? S L C one C two. Yes, L C one C two. Correct. Uh, is this fine here? So, uh, what is this here? Is it uh, S into C1 plus C2 divided by? Uh, you are taking out S now. You are taking out S, correct? So, does this S go off? Is it yes, L into C1, C2? Yes, sir. Then? What is this? Is it uh, here also? I just make only a square plus one over L C one. Is it L C one? I want to make the coefficients of a square as one in both numerator and denominator. So can I now further write it as one over S into C two? A square plus one over L C one by A square plus C one plus C two by L into C one C two. Correct. Yes. Sir. Now we are. What is this? This is actually impedance. Why we are? Why we are actually trying to do all this is because we are looking for does this Crystal behaves like a inductor. 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 We want to see that. So we are looking at at what frequency that can happen. At what frequency that can happen. So Z of S is given by now one over S C two S square plus one over L C one by S square plus. Uh, I will write one over L into C one C two by C one plus C two. Correct. Now yes. I will take Z replace S by J omega. S by J omega. So can I write it as one over J omega C two? Yes. Can I write this as uh, uh, minus omega square plus one over L C one? And minus omega square plus one over L C equivalent. Where C equivalent yes. is this. Okay. <clears throat> Now what I'll do is uh, I'll take this J above. Is it now minus J omega? Yes. Sir. C two. Uh, can I write it as now? One over L C one minus omega square by one over L C equivalent minus omega square. Yes, sir. Can you do that? Yes. So let us, of course, I can also write it this way: minus J omega. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> Minus. Okay, uh, J will come with it up. This is omega C two. Uh, I I will just retain that uh, omega minus. I I'll just take minus sign outside in both numerator and denominator. Can I write it as omega square minus one over L C one 
by omega square minus 1 over L C equivalent? Yes, sir. This is fine. <clears throat> now, can you see this 1 over omega, 1 over L C1 and 1 over L C equivalent? Are they like frequencies? So if you just go back to your previous uh, derivation, uh, can you see this here? Mm -hmm. I just go back here. What is this? Can I write omega square is equal to 1 over LC? Yes, here? sir. This is LC. So, what I want to say is, I will say this as omega 1. I will say this as omega 2. Yes, sir. So, the equation reduces to, the equation reduces to, so we are looking at the equation for impedance of the crystal, which is minus J by omega C2, omega square minus omega 1 square by omega square minus omega 2 square. Yes. What is omega 1 square now? It is 1 over LC1 or omega 1 is so and so. What is omega 2? is 1 over root of L C1 C2 by C1 plus C2. Done? Yes, sir. Now let us see. Uh, we are looking at we are looking at at what frequency the impedance is inductive. Am I correct? Yes, sir. So let us consider this okay out of these two which one is uh, more which one is less so w1 is so here i uh, uh, you have c1 and c1 c2 equivalent suppose when you have one capacitor you have, if you have one capacitor c1 and if you have one more capacitor added in series which one will be having lesser value whether this will have lesser value, this will have lesser value. The first one will have lesser value. Assume the that this is this is point 0.1 value. microfarad. Assume that this is point 0.1 microfarad and it is point 0.01 microfarad. Let us assume. Yes, sir. Which is less? Second one will be less. Is this is less? Yes, sir. So shall I say C? Of course, this is C equivalent, no? Yes, sir. So, is C equivalent lesser than C1? Yes, sir. Shall I say omega 2 is greater than omega 1? Yes, sir. Actually? Yes, sir. So, let me say this is omega 1, this is omega 2. Correct? Yes, sir. So, let us give the value of omega less than omega 1 first. Because I have to see for different frequencies what is the impedance offered by the crystal. Is this is the crystal uh, impedance expression? Yes, sir. If this is the crystal impedance expression, I have to see how does the impedance of the crystal behaves across frequencies. Across frequencies. For omega less than omega 1, is this inductive or capacitive? See now, if this is less, yes. if, if this omega is lesser than omega 1, is it certainly less than omega 2 also? Yes. Because we know that omega 2 is greater than omega 1. If, if omega is less than omega 1, then omega is less than omega 2 also. Yes. So, what is this quantity? Does this quantity becomes positive? Because this is lesser, no? This is lesser. So does the numerator becomes negative? Yes, sir. Does the denominator is also negative? Yes, sir. Okay, let me just take some example. Uh, okay, let omega be 1 meg. 
omega okay omega 1 be one meg omega 2 be 1.01 meg and let us in that omega is equal to 10k if this is 10k is it like okay minus uh, 1 whole square by minus 1 point uh, uh, what is that 1.01 mega whole square and this is 10k 10k is, is both the quantities, quantities negative by negative yes so will you get a positive quantity here overall ratio yes is that is multiplied by mega g omega yes sir. so for this values for these values is the impedance z of s is capacitive in nature yes sir so here this is minus j when you have minus j it is it is a capacitance no so how, how do you write the capacitance of uh, uh, impedance in terms of uh, capacitance in terms of the is it not 1 over j xc is it not minus j by xc can you see there is a minus yes sir so for frequencies for frequencies less than this, so this is capacitive in nature. Correct? Yes, sir. Let us consider frequency omega, which is greater than omega 2. If it is greater than omega 2, what will happen? Is this positive? Yes, sir. Is this also positive? Yes, sir. Then what is the overall ratio? Positive. Then what is that as? Sir, negative. Uh, is it capacitive? Yes. So for this also, Z of S is capacitive. Meaning here also it is capacitive in nature. Correct? Anything yes, in this region and anything in this region they are capacitive in nature. What is capacitive? This is this is negative. Z of S is minus J. Yes, Suppose if omega is equal to omega 1. What happens? Sir, numerator will become 0. This will become 0. So, will it come here? Yes, sir. Suppose if omega becomes omega 2 denominator will become zero does it become infinity yes sir so that okay does it become infinity there yes sir meaning to say as the value of omega changes i'll just rewrite here as the value of omega changes so if you write this as omega one omega two it was inductive for so this is z of s it is j this is negative this is positive this is capacitive in nature. This capacitive nature will become zero when it reaches zero. Correct? Yes. Suppose if the value of omega is between omega 1 omega 2. This is more than omega 1, but it is less than omega 2. If it is more than omega 1, is this positive? Yes, sir. If it is less than omega 2, is it negative? Yes, sir. So, is the overall value ratio, is it negative? Yes, sir. That negative into this minus, will it become positive? Yes, sir. So, does your impedance becomes inductive for this region of frequency? Yes, sir. So, this is now inductive here. Meaning, between these two frequencies, the impedance will become inductive the impedance will become inductive. We know that when omega is equal to equal to omega 2, it's infinity, no? Yes, it's infinity. Sir. Anything slightly more than infinity, of course, it will just come down and it will it will happen like this. So, anything just on the other side, it is again infinity and it will again go. See now, for any frequencies below omega 2, it is capacitive. Any frequency after omega 2, it is still capacitive. Between omega and omega 2, it is inductive in nature. Inductive nature. When I say between these two frequencies, these two frequencies are very, very close. If it is 1 megahertz, the other one is, if it is 1 mega radian per second, radian per second, other one is 1.0001 mega radian per second. 
meaning this crystal will behave like an inductor for a very small region of frequency range so that you can use this crystal you can use this crystal as an inductor in that very small range so that you will get the oscillation which is highly stable highly stable over there so let me just take okay, a uh, recap what is that we have done we are actually trying to find out uh, this is the circuit diagram of a crystal oscillator where we are using crystal in place of inductor in place of inductor now when you are replacing that inductor by a crystal we want to find at what frequency range this behaves like a inductor for that we are trying to find the frequency response of impedance of this this is just a frequency response across frequency how does the impedance of this behaves so for that we started with what is the impedance of this so impedance is nothing but the admittance or sorry one over admittance which is nothing but admittance of this plus the admittance of this the admittance of this i am writing one over the impedance so it is one over the impedance here i can write okay one more step and eh? one over sc2 plus one over z lc1 so z lc1 is nothing but this this is z lc1 so upon doing all these things so one thing uh, we need to keep in mind is that we need to get the coefficient of a square in both numerator and denominator as one so that is the only requirement keeping that in mind you just take some of the things which are coefficients of make the coefficient of a square as one in both numerator as well as denominator then you will end up with the desired uh, expression for the impedance which gives us minus j omega c2 so on so so now we are looking at for different range of frequencies what is the impedance offered by the crystal for frequencies below omega 1 it is capacitive at omega 1 it is zero between omega 1 omega 2 it is inductive in nature at omega 2 it is plus infinity just just okay can you say can i say it is omega is equal to minus okay when i say just uh, we say okay, zero minus minus and zero plus plus no just exactly after that, just, just exactly, exactly before, before that. that. Just exactly uh, before that, that, it is plus infinity. Just, just exactly after that, it is minus infinity. Like so, when it is minus infinity, means okay, it is very uh, high capacitance here. So that's why it is very high inductance and it is very low, very uh, high capacitance. If the value of omega is slightly greater than, sorry, this is slightly greater than omega two. So this is the behavior of your. Uh, impedance of the crystal so that I can able to utilize uh, the crystal as an inductor over a very narrow range of frequency. So this is how it goes in the in the textbook. I just uh, uh, elaborated that. You can see here this is capacitive. They are very close to each other. They are very close to each other. It just shoots up and it comes down again back and then this is. You can see here it is inductive. Only this region between omega s and omega p. So omega, I just okay, uh, replace that uh, CS and CP by C1, C2s. So this is how the frequencies are, uh, this is how the uh, crystal reactance uh, over different frequencies. This is the frequency response of the crystal. So once you are using this as a part of your, uh, uh, what, Colfitz oscillator, it becomes a crystal oscillator. It becomes a crystal oscillator. Uh, is it clear? The only thing is that you may have to just okay, write once or twice uh, this equation so that you can be able to get only uh, uh, requirement here that make uh, so what to take common factor so to take such thing common factor so that you can end up with the quotient of s square as one. So of course, you have this s cube term, all those stuff. Make sure that you retain only s square. To retain s square, you have to take out s l c1 c2. So if you take out that, then it just becomes so easy okay yes sir. Uh, uh why why we were actually went for crystal oscillator sir to get a stable to get a stable uh, sustained oscillation for uh okay uh, for, for a long time yes so, so that stability of the oscillation sir there for long time uh of course once lockdown opens uh, we will be just uh, 
doing all this experiment uh, of course once you come back to class uh, labs okay, we will we'll make you people to do all these oscillators you can see uh, this uh, cd cd will have very less impact on the uh, what, the oscillation of this one this is purely designed by this you might have seen that in your uh, pca class uh, we will be talking about there is a physical frequency uh, 12 megahertz or whatever the frequency so it is always at that frequency again uh, what is the requirement of gain? Again, the gain requirement is the same. A should be equal to or greater than or equal to Cg by Cd. That condition is still there for this oscillator also because this is like a uh, <coughs> Colbert's oscillator. Only thing is that this Cg Cd will not decide the frequency. The frequency is decided by only the crystal. If it is one megahertz crystal. We may have to adjust the value of CD, CD so that we get the proper oscillation, proper oscillation. Okay, uh, any, any clarification with my here? Okay, let me just know, okay, uh, let's, let me know the flow of this equation. Uh, we just uh, put in the chat box, are you okay with that or? Do you need to know okay, how does this become so okay, capacitive, inductive, and uh, uh, again capacitive? Is that case fine? Or uh, let me just know from the chat box. Uh, why R is not considered? Okay, as I said <coughs> earlier, the resistance offered by the crystal is very, very small at the frequency when you are talking about megahertz because we know that we have an inductance. So if I just go back here, if I go back here, this is the resistance, this is the resistance. Even though resistance is there in series with all of them, because the reactance offered by this inductance and this capacitance is so high that you can neglect the value of R for the analysis so that it, your analysis becomes very simple. Otherwise, if you take R also, of course, this, this equations will become slightly complex and it will not have any changes. So there are no much changes because the uh, effective resistance value is so less that you can perform negative. Yes, sir. Yeah. So, let me just put in the chart back to your. Uh, are you okay with this? <coughs> what what needs to be uh, explained again? So, one of the questions is why R is not considered. So, I hope I answered it. Can I just get the response in the glance okay, about. <coughs> The impedance variation across the frequency. Okay with that? Not okay with that? What what uh, what more you want? So we are we are just looking at uh, for different values of omega. How does this behave? Because omega is the one which is uh, which is variable. Because for a given value of uh, C1, C2, and inductance for a given crystal, you cannot change omega. Uh, sorry, omega one, omega two. We are looking at at what frequency it becomes capacitive, inductive, and so on. Make it fast. <laughs> 